So I had a joke to like start the video, but all I can get over is how small this hammer is. It's like tutorial size. How would you eat? I would crack my knuckles before I would get any work done with this bear. Like, what do you, what, what do you do with it? I'm just gonna put that down here. We're gonna keep that. And now we're gonna talk to you about different things that you're probably going on to take into consideration when you're building your car. And probably the top mistakes that you could possibly make when building your car. When you're really going into it, there's a lot of rookie mistakes that a lot of people make. And we've talked about this in the past in terms of building your car, five myths, five tips, things like that. But now we're going into like rookie mistakes. And these are things that we've mentioned, that we've talked about before, things that we've brought up before. And now we're bringing it up again because people are still doing it and we just feel the need to help. We just feel like, we feel like we need to help you. And we are here to do that. A Udeme, por favor. So the first thing that goes into it is don't forget to check out Wheels Tire Suspension at FitmentIndustries.com. There's the sales plug. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the little bell thing if you really wanna watch more of my face with the receding hairline, even though somebody got mad and said that because I was putting it like this, that I'm trying to hide my receding hairline. Joke's on you, I've had this since I was like six, okay? So it's not going anywhere, it's not receding, it's just a standalone lack of hair since the beginning. Right, let's get into it. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to get into in terms of a rookie mistake is people that spend a lot of money out of the gate on parts. So there's two types of people. People that spend a ton of money on the car and then have no money for parts. And then people that have like a decent car and then spend all the money on the car parts or one singular car part like AccuAir management and things like that that cost like four grand or the three piece wheels and then they get you know nothing else because they run out of money. A way to not make that mistake is to diversify your funds, diversify your portfolio. You can impress your 401k guy with that word if you want across the things that you want to get. So if you're looking for wheels, tires, suspension, so maybe some strut bars, some aero, things like that, window tint, all that sort of stuff, try to figure out what your budget's gonna be for that and don't dump it into the one coolest thing that you can find because ultimately you may have really, really cool wheels, but the rest of your car is stock and at the end of the day, that's gonna look terrible. On the complete other side of the fence, you have people that spend way too much money on a singular car part and then you have the people that try to spend no money on any of their car parts. And here's the thing, there's nothing wrong with being conscious of about how much money you're spending on your car. If you wanna be a cool adult, and if you go out there and you watch YouTube, I know there's people out there that are like, I wanna not mis make mistakes when I'm 20. And then you go and watch those videos where everybody tells you to not buy a house. They tell you to not buy an expensive car. They tell you to not have a girlfriend or dogs. They tell you to pretty much have no life and then you'll save money and you won't make any of the mistakes that they say that you'll make in your 20s, even though I'm pretty sure that's just called living, not making a mistake with your life. But if you want to, if you really want to be careful with how you're spending your money, that doesn't mean you should just go cheap on everything you do. It means that you should buy quality stuff when you're buying it and then that you're paying attention to the stuff that you're buying and how much you're spending on your car. At the end of the day, not doing it. When you really break it down from beginning to end, car parts can be really expensive, but if you figure out what you're planning to spend before you go into it, you're actually probably gonna save yourself a lot of hassle because then you'll be able to look at it and say, what do I actually want out of my $10,000 budget if I only have a $5,000 budget to work with? And you'll end up getting the things that you actually care about instead of just splurging on one thing or splurging on nothing. And if you go too cheap on parts, you're gonna end up having to replace them anyway. A lot of cheap parts end up not working as intended. If you go onto eBay or Wish, which happens to be a thing these days, you're gonna end up being extremely disappointed like that last Tinder date you went on last Friday. We all have been there except for me because I wasn't a part of that age. Apparently people can just swipe now to date which is beyond me which is just crazy. It's like and the next tip that we have, if you're gonna be a rookie, don't make this mistake. Please don't make this mistake. Please, 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 please don't make this mistake. I would rather see a car that I like don't really get than one that I love if it was built for anybody else besides you. Don't build a car for other people because you'll never enjoy it. When you go down to different sort of car shows and things like that, you'll always see the people that are extremely proud of the cars that they've built because it's been their vision since day one. It's been nobody else's vision but theirs. But a lot of people these days, especially the younger culture, has a tendency to try and build cars that everybody else has built before. You go and you post up a car of your, or post up a picture of your brand new FRS and the first comment that you'll likely get is wide body it. The first thing that you'll get after that once you wide body it is get three piece wheels. The thing that you'll get after that is please get a battle arrow wing. The next thing you get after that is air suspension. You just, everybody is always trying to tell you what to do. Make sure that you're building a car for what you want because it, 
really, when we look at cars in the gallery, we can tell the difference between people that have built the car for themselves and people that have built the car to just try to kind of get attention. You'll ultimately fall out of love with your car if you don't build it for anybody besides yourself. And if you haven't had anyone do that in the past, you could probably just drop a comment below and ask somebody, and I'm sure somebody would pipe up, but I know for a fact I've done it and other people have done it as well. So if you're gonna go into making a mistake, that would probably be the biggest and most expensive one because you're gonna end up spending all the money doing all the things and then you're gonna look at it and you're gonna be like, that's not even my car. As we're going on the discussion of mods, another couple of rookie mistakes is going into unbalanced and unnecessary mods. When you go into unbalanced and unnecessary, we were talking about the fact that when you're at the car show and you see that one Z06 pull up that has a cam that sounds like it wants to eat your like, you know, baby sister's face off. Like the cam is angrier than like anything else you've ever heard before in your life. And you're thinking to yourself, you know, it'd be really cool if I had that cam. And you don't realize that the car has been like professionally built or it's like, I don't know, a 1, thousand, 1200 horsepower, some sort of massive behemoth of a motor. And yours is just a completely stock C5 that you managed to take the muffler out and it sounds cool, but it's an automatic. So you really don't tell anybody and you just pray that nobody notices or looks inside your engine bay or looks inside the cockpit. Don't do that because you're gonna ruin it. Like cams and excessive mods and unbalanced mods are something that a lot of people do because they just wanna have the quick and easy result instead of doing things the long and hard way. A lot of supporting mods get missed nowadays because everybody just wants to get this turbocharged or forced induction or they wanna do something crazy with wide wheels and they forget about the brakes or they forget about the tires that ultimately results in the car being unbalanced and it results in a lot of mods being unnecessary. You'll actually find out that you can get a lot more out of a car in terms of overall driving experience if you go with things that are more moderate, if you go with things that are actually going to work for how you drive the car. Now, if you drive your car a quarter si you know, a quarter mile at a time like Vin Diesel and all you care about is that nine second quarter mile and it doesn't go anywhere else, then hell yeah, I'll send it to you. Get yourself a mullet and you can have yourself the biggest cam in the nation. But if you plan on driving your car every single day, it's probably not gonna be the thing for you. Which essentially bridges into just unbalanced mods. When you're going into unbalanced mods, you're looking at things that ultimately affect the overall ride quality or drive quality of your car and you end up spending a ton of money on some sort of powerhouse thing in your motor and then you don't back up your brakes, you don't back up your suspension, or you don't back up your tires, and then you wonder why your car drives like shit. I can tell you why. It's because you made the car unbalanced. And it's not really something that we're too used to having, but the same thing could be said for suspension modifications. When you're slamming your car to the ground, you're ultimately making it unbalanced. And if you really don't like that look and you don't think it's worth it, you're probably not gonna have the greatest time driving your car. Which goes into a whole nother slew of things that we see a lot of rookies tend to make, is when they make car parts intentionally unsafe. And when they pair that with things like cheap tires or other things that happen to do with just like not really caring about the overall drive quality of their car. What does that end up meaning? It means making your car unreliable. When you go into things that really just make your car unsafe, we're talking about just not doing things the right way. We're talking about when people take shortcuts on different sort of setups with short throw shifters, linkages, polyurethane bushings, and things like that going with the cheap alternatives or skipping it all entirely or just trying to make things work for yourself. Now, I'm not gonna play coy and pretend that I've never done those things before either because I definitely have. I've gone to Menards and I've used bolts that I definitely shouldn't. I've also used washers that I definitely shouldn't. But you learn as you go and now I'm telling you to not go to Menards and don't put washers in your drive shaft to try and get your dots in home because ultimately it's not gonna work and they're ultimately gonna loosen themselves over time and then you're gonna wonder why when you press on the gas there's some sort of delay between the drive shaft and you're pressing the gas. I've made a couple mistakes, okay? Just bear with me. And that goes into cheap tires and just making things unreliable. When you really think about it, you want the car to drive just as good as you want it to look. But if you make it look really cool, but it doesn't drive worth a damn, you're really not gonna enjoy it. And that's something that we can pretty much say with utmost confidence. Now, that doesn't mean that like you shouldn't slam your car or that you shouldn't have a function to it or you shouldn't do something crazy. You want to go do something crazy and I, I would, want anybody that's going to build their car to go do something crazy. Just make sure that while you're doing said crazy thing, you give it your best shot to try to do it the right way. And even if you mess up, at least learn, and then you can improve it next time around. Which goes into the last thing of modifying your car past the point of being able to control your car. Now, if you didn't know that there's a lot of people out there where you can buy 500, 600 horsepower cars for like 40 to $30,000 now. Buying a modified Corvette is actually not that expensive and you can get a ton of bang for your buck right now in the current day and age on cars that you wouldn't be able to do 10 years ago. 
What that ultimately has resulted in is a lot of people owning some pretty damn fast cars without being able to drive them. And you have this driver disconnect, which results in poor driver mod. Really, what I'm trying to say is, is when you're modifying your car outside of the scope of your capabilities of driving it, you're ultimately gonna have a terrible time because either it's gonna kill you or you're gonna be scared that it's going to kill you, which both are okay as long as you're practicing on how to drive it better and you're taking it to events or maybe you're taking it to autocross, but make sure that if you're gonna be modifying your car, don't be a rookie and throw a thousand horsepower at something and then crash it into a tree as your cars and coffee like every other Mustang owner has done in the past five years. Ultimately, what modifying your car comes down to is being able to build it for yourself and making sure that you're doing your research before you modify your car. There's so many things that you can make mistakes on, but that's half the fun of building a car is making the mistakes and figuring out what you did wrong so that you can fix it the next time around. Nobody will ever get modifying or building a car right. And to a lot of people, you're never finished building a car pretty much until you sell it. What it really comes down to is trying to make sure that you're doing it the right way. And if you're gonna do it the wrong way, learning how to fix it the second time around so that you can keep building it, keep having fun, and keep building cars that are slightly outside of your comfort zone, but not being so far out of the way that you ultimately lose and fall out of love of the thing that you're trying to build. So let us know if you made any sort of rookie mistakes when you built your first car in the comment section below, and let us know what you'd like us to talk about next. If you're looking for wheels, tire suspension, you guys know the drill, fitmanindustries.com. If you've got any cool cars, add it to our gallery at fitmanindustries.com forward slash add. I'm Alex from Fitman Industries. That's like the fourth time I've said it now. It's gonna be like a thing. It's gonna be like a twitch that I have as I'm like sleeping, Fitman Industries. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Alex, we'll see you later. Peace.